Hi Chelsea fans, Chelsea staff here back with another video and a lot's been said at the moment about Chelsea's poor form, about Frank Lampard, there's speculation regarding his future and I've just released a video on the channel, a five minute news update regarding that. But I wanted to do a different video today and the different video is regarding Kai Havertz. There's so much being talked about, there's so much being spoken about by ex-pros, by, by pundits, by reporters about how Chelsea can change their fortunes. And I'm just wondering if Chelsea's record signing holds the key to a dramatic turnaround for Chelsea and for Frank Lampard. Let's get cracking. As I say, there's a lot being discussed at the minute about Chelsea's fortunes, the way we plan, the tactics, and it's clear that the 4-3-3 against the, the bigger sides doesn't seem to be working for one reason or another. Everyone's having their say about tactics and what changes should be made, whether it should be two players playing up front, whether it should be a midfield four, whether it should be 4-2-3-1, whether it should be three centre-backs again with the two wing-backs. There's a lot being spoken about at the minute, and... All we can do is speculate, but what I can do in this particular video is try and understand how we're going to get the best out of Kai Havertz, and I'm going to answer a question straight away. People have asked me on my chat when I'm doing my live commentary, why is Kai Havertz not starting in the 4-3-3 formation? It's pretty clear. I just want to say just very quickly, there's no fancy gimmicks, there's no images, I'm just going to talk to you because that's what I wanted to do and it's just so you guys can relate. He's not being played in the 4-3-3 formation because Kai Havertz is not a box-to-box -box midfielder. In that 4-3-3 with Nogolo Conte playing, most of the time is the pivot, you've got two players playing on the outside of him as box-to-box -box midfielders and as a box-to-box -box midfielder, your responsibility is to be an influence in both halves of the pitch, with and without the ball, and that's key. You're expected to work hard off the ball, in attacking areas, use it wisely, work hard off of it to track and to win the ball back in high areas and defensively in your own half, to pick it up and play it out of trouble, to be an influence in there and also win talent, tackles, challenges, be a defensive influence as well as an attacking influence. And that's what you're asked to do as a box-to-box -box midfielder, to support the defensive line, but also get up and support the attacking players. Mason Mount does that with boundless energy, as we've already seen. Nagala Conte does it. Matteo Kovacic does it. Does Jorginho do it? To a point. Not great, but to a point. In the defensive area, you have to say, even though he is improving. And Billy Gilmore is still young and he's going to be developing that side of his game. But what about Kai Havertz? So Kai Havertz, for me, is not classed as a box-to-box -box midfielder. He's not going to give you the same influence, the same impact that the likes of Mount Kovacic and N'Golo Conte will give you in both halves of the pitch. I've always said it about Kai Havertz since he's joined Chelsea, is I think he sort of runs around and he seems to be moving around sort of three-quarter paced. When he picks the ball up deep in midfield, he doesn't seem to be like to bust a gut and to go like Matteo Kovacic does. He doesn't sort of stride away from players and people get back at him and challenge him and win the ball off him or, you know, at times he, he does step away from people. But I think for me, him playing in the deeper area, you're not getting the best out of him. And so when you're playing the 4 3 3, as we have done in recent weeks, and you imagine you're the likes of Roman Abramovich and Marina Ganovskaya in the Chelsea hierarchy and you're not getting results and you're looking over at the bench and you've got the Chelsea's record signing sitting there, can't be involved and doesn't really have a, a place that fits in that box-to-box -box midfield role, you're going to sort of ask questions, which is what a lot of Chelsea fans have been doing. So how do you get the best out of Kai Havertz? Is it playing a different formation? And I think the answer is yes. It's obvious and clear that it is yes. And it's in the 4-2-3-1 formation with Kai Havertz playing as a number 10. Now, there's going to be conjecture as to who plays the two role, the two deep midfield roles. And there's going to be slight hesitation with people thinking about that and looking at it now as to the way our team works and looking as though those two midfielders could be exposed. 
But to counteract that argument regarding the formation first, the player after, is if you think about the likes of the games at Everton, the games against Wolves, even though we were 1-0 up, the defeat to Arsenal, the most recent defeat to Man City, we never changed anything until it was too late. We were light for light with substitutions. We set ourselves up in the 4-3-3, which every single manager in the Premier League now knows that's what you're going to do. And you need to be able to change in-game and force yourselves on the opponent. Now, I'm not saying that Chelsea would have got a better result against Man City or fought back against Man City or Arsenal or held on against Wolves or beaten Everton. But I think we've had a, a much better opportunity to do so with a switch in formation in game. So is the answer just doing it in game or just starting with that formation initially? Now for me in a 4-2-3-1 formation, straight away you're giving the opposition a problem with four players to think about in the attacking area. If anything, if you're playing in a game where you're up against it and you know your two wide men are going to be tracking back or dropping slightly deeper, you could pretty much say you're going to have your, your goalkeeper and your four defenders and your two midfielders, seven players. So not including the keeper, you've got six players there that can sit and hold their positions and allow four people up top to create craft, interplay amongst themselves, move about, and try to create something and cause the opposition a problem, which you then hope forces them backwards because they've got to have something to deal with and something to think about, something we've not given them in recent weeks. And this is where Kai Havertz can come in. Now, straight away, there's going to be a fight for places if you make this switch. I've said earlier in the season that I think the formation's unbalanced and I think we're exposed in the midfield area. But it's clear that the 4-3-3, which I thought would be much better, is not doing enough in forward areas, in the big games. So, you could bring Kai Havertz in as a number 10. And you could then say it's between him and Mason Mount to fight for that starting position. With a lot of people saying, why is Mason Mount playing week in, week out? At the moment, it's because his box-to-box -box midfielder suits him perfectly and he's got boundless energy. But he can't do it every single game. So you've got Kai Havertz and Mason Mount playing as a number 10 in behind the striker. And straight away, you are then got a link man between the midfield and the striker and the two players out wide. At the moment, you're relying on the two box-to-box -box midfielders to get the ball wide and to feed it into the striker, depending on who's playing. If it's Olivier Giroud playing up front, he's the, the ultimate target man. You can give him the ball, it's going to stick, whether he drops deep for it or he just wants to hold it up and bring other people in, or to try and create something off his own back. Tammy's much more mobile, so you know you can't really play him as a link man, you need to feed him in the channels between centre-backs and, and full-backs to try and make the most of his mobility. And as for Timo Werner, a simple ball over the top and he's in. You haven't got a link man really in that 4-3-3 formation. So if you put Kai Havertz, who, let's face it, from what we've seen in Bayer Leverkusen and all of his qualities that he's got is a much more influential player and playing in a position that suits him, that suits him down to the ground. He can create, he can craft, he can score goals, he can assist, he can, he can be someone that people play into and then look to him to, to play that pass, to open a door. And alongside the likes of Christian Pulisic and Hakim Ziyech, those three supporting a striker, whether it's Werner Giroud or Tammy Abraham, you can't ask for much more. Let's just be honest. And if you're playing those three in behind a striker, whether it's any one of the strikers, if you're still not creating chances, then you've got a problem. But when you've got someone of that talent in Kai Havertz, who's really struggled to settle into the Premier League, to get used to the pace, the power. And let's be honest, he's been playing out of position, which is why he struggled. If you play him in his natural position for the next five games, Fulham, coming up Premier League, followed by Leicester, then followed by Wolves and then Burnley. Don't forget you've got Morecambe. I'm not sure if he'll play or not. Those four Premier League games, if you switch and play Kai Havertz in every single game, his confidence levels are going to go from here up to here. Not only that, but if you're then looking at Timo Werner, 
Now, Timo Werner knows that Kai Havertz is going to play him in. He knows that Hakim Ziyech is going to look for a ball to play him in. You know, Christian Pulisic as well. The options that Chelsea would have in that with those four up front or those three in particular, literally with Kai Havertz orchestrating and dictating what goes on from the middle of the pitch rather than just relying on the two wide players could have a massive influence on what happens to our season, what happens to the fortunes of the team, to Frank Lampard, and it really does, it really will give an opposition a massive problem to think about. Think of Man City, the weekend they made their switch to three players at the back and they pushed the right back into the middle of midfield. If you've got an attacking four there, you've got to keep five players back. Simple as that. You're giving them something to deal with. No manager in their right mind, apart from our third goal we conceded at the weekend, even though I don't even think that's Frank Lampard's fault, you're never going to leave yourselves one-on-one. You're never going to leave yourself with four defenders marking four attackers. You're always going to have somebody covering, you'd imagine. So, you've got someone sitting on a bench, the, the record signing, who's not involved and can't settle into life in the Premier League at the minute because he's not being played in his natural position because at the moment it doesn't exist. You've got a striker who is renowned for his goal scoring, who's now gone 12, 13 games without a goal and he's suffering for a lack of confidence kicked the corner flag at the weekend which was just embarrassing for him but he comes into that team knowing that he's got his mate behind him and an attacking creating sort of three players that are just literally going to do everything they can and give you every opportunity to score his confidence should go through the roof Havertz is through the roof the teams should then build but the only thing we need to do is make sure that it's right defensively as well, without the ball. Kai Havertz can have a real influence. There's a lot of talk about the fact that he's struggling and there was a ridiculous story last week saying that he regrets the decision to come to the Premier League. I still think with the second half of the season to go that Kai Havertz and Timo Werner can have a big, big say on Chelsea's season, on how successful we're going to be. I'm not being funny, but you look around Europe, you look around the Premier League and you look at a team sheet where you know the attacking four is Pulisic, Ziyech, Havertz, Werner. You've got a job on. So I think that's the way that Kai Havertz can be the influence that he's been brought to be over a period of time. We don't expect it straight away, but over a period of time, he'll learn and develop and become the player that we all know he is more than capable of being and that's how I think you get the best out of him. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you like the video, I like the waffle, but I'm just trying to get it through, the, the message I'm trying to get through and explain it to you guys so hopefully you guys understand it without the, the, the flashy images and gimmicks and tactical screen, uh, screens. I just needed to get the video done because I need to get it off my chest. It's been bugging me for a couple of days and I couldn't get a video done yesterday because my audio failed, which is marvellous. So, if you agree or have any other opinion on Kai Havertz, put it in the comments section below. Drop a like on the video for me and then subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But, most importantly of all, drop a like, let me know what you think about the situation and if you think Kai Havertz can be a real influence in a 4-2-3-1 as a number 10. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.